Captain's log, star date, 00000000000000000001. After encountering a space-time anomaly in the Kaleidos system, unfortunately, the brand spanking new cutting-edge flagship of the fleet of the Federation of Zestonian Planets, the USS Zisto Prize, unfortunately was damaged and crash-landed on the local planet Nalvis. The entire crew and everyone else on board was instantly vaporized upon impact with the planet, except due to some unforeseen twist of fate, I remain the only survivor, and the USS Zisto Prize has been reduced to a pile of scrap. Thankfully, the recently deceased science officer, Ensign Benson Svensson, left behind an emergency crash-landing recovery kit. We've successfully completed the first two steps, we've built the burner base, and we've built the base builder, and thanks to recent innovations in technology, I have cobbled together from the scrap I've managed to scrape from the ground and cook in a simple stove a brand new ship I'm going to christen it today. I dubbed the, the USS Zisto Prize B. Let's give it a little bit of fuel, and let's take it for its maiden voyage. Oh yeah, look at the speed, look at the acceleration, look at the way it handles, it handles like a dream. What a ship, doesn't rattle at all. So before we get started with step three of the Hostile Alien Planet Crash Landing Recovery Kit designed by Science Officer Ensign Benson Svensson, step three is build the base. This is what we're going to be placing and creating right here. This is the starter base. Before we can do that, what we need to do is we need to clear out a huge amount of space. We gotta get all these trees and rocks out of the way because they're gonna complicate matters. I'm trying to remove them as I'm trying to Follow the instructions provided by the blueprint, I'm trying to place the things on the ground, and I'm removing trees and rocks, and I might accidentally remove the uh, the blueprint and that kind of thing. So, we're going to clear out a lot of space. To do that, we're going to use some explosive technology made with a little bit of coal, a little bit of iron. We're going to use grenades, a lot of grenades. This is going to be a really simple step. This is a sub-step of step three, and we're just going to take care of it. It's going to be real simple. It's going to just go bing, 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 and etc 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 yada 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 i think you get the idea we've cleared out a huge amount of trees and rocks now we can move on to sub step two of step three of the hostile alien planet crash landing recovery kit which is to place the actual blueprint this guy right here this big blueprint and all we have to do is we've got to line up the the section that corresponds with this part we've already built up here to do that we'll just walk a little bit to the south and we'll move slowly because the game's a little bit laggy doing this. We just need to place it once, and I just saved it, so if I screw it up, I'll just reload. That looks good. The stuff up there is all blue. Then we just shift click and wait for the lag. Click. Okay, it's done. Okay, Q to put that away. Now we can move on to sub step three of step three of the Hostile Alien Planet Crash Landing Recovery Kit. As I was collecting all those rocks that we were removing, I was converting them into stone furnaces. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to place all the stone furnaces. And we're just going to do it all at once, just like this. Here we go. And that's it. Easy peasy. Sub step three of step three of the emergency crash landing uh, recovery kit is finished. We placed all of those all at once because they're very simple to place. A bunch of straight lines with not many gaps. No big deal. Next thing we'll do, we're going to pick up a variety of different things to start filling in different sections we're gonna need some inserters some power poles and we're gonna need quite a few belts let's go ahead and grab those let's grab all these let's grab some splitters and i guess some assembly machines as well oh i haven't placed uh, all of these different guys here need to start making green circuits before we can start making assembly machines too so we need to fill out 
part of the base. And we don't need to fill out the whole thing at first. What we want is a little bit of everything. We want a little bit of steel being crafted. We want a little bit of copper, a little bit of iron, a little bit of stone, all the kind of basics. And then we'll fill in bits and pieces of, of the base until we get things operational. We need Green Circus to craft some stuff up in the mall here. And then we want to get science up and running so we can start researching things faster as well. Because the uh, the burner base is pretty slow. And this is sub-step four, which is really similar to sub-step three. We're just going to take care of We're just going to do it. Here we go. And just like that, we finish sub-step four of step three of the hostile alien... Wait, what is it again? Hostile alien planet crash land and recovery kit. Sub-step four of step three. We've got a little bit of everything. A little bit of copper, a little bit of iron, a little bit of steel. We've got some bricks. We've got some glass being smelted out of stone. We've got stone, we've got coal, and we've got green circuits in the space exploration mod pack, by the way. Green circuits don't use iron plates, they use stone bricks which are crafted into stone tablets. So slightly modified blueprint from the standard green circuit early game blueprint. And those go up here, we should be crafting the assembly machine mark twos now. Up there, and if I mouse over that thing, yep, they're in the machine. We can upgrade all the, uh, the assembly machine mark ones to mark twos eventually. We've got some science operational. All of our labs are down, and now we're just going to start filling in things as we need them. Next thing to do, I guess, is going to be to start on the oil. And then we can fill in red circuits. The nearest oil, we've got some up here, 2,800%. And there's another little cluster up here, 2,900%. We also need to keep an eye on our radar to uh, watch out for any alien expansions. And that's how it's going to go. We're going to fill in things as we need to. We're going to get the oil up and running. We're going to fill in some red circuits. We're going to add more mining drills as we need them and fill in more of the smelting in the back end of the base. As it becomes apparent that we're a little bit short on some basic resources. We need to place down these meteor point defenses scattered around the base so that we don't get clobbered by some falling rocks. Fill in the purple science, fill in the yellow science. Once it's researched, we can start placing the meteor defense installations. Meteors often come in clusters, and these things aren't 100% accurate, so we're going to need several of them. But they do hit the whole planet, so we don't have to worry about overlapping coverage areas or anything like that. We're going to need a lot more power because of all these machines, so we're going to need more steam engines. We can start with a small amount of steam engines. But eventually we're going to need to clear out a large area and put down a whole bunch of them to power all this stuff. And I think that pretty much catches us up to the present moment in time where I'm trying to get some robots up and running. Ordinarily, in a vanilla game of Factorio, I would try to get construction robots up as soon as possible so that they can take over the task of building the base and I can run off and murder aliens with my shiny new Power Armor Mark II, which I don't have yet on this game. But in Space Exploration Mod Pack, that's a little bit harder to do for a few reasons. For one, the robots, they're much more expensive to craft. And for another, the research to speed them up, that's harder to get. Beyond rank 3, we have to go into outer space just to be able to do the research. So they're not going to be moving very fast, but probably the biggest problem slowing us down right now is that so many recipes are altered in the Space Exploration Mod Pack. We've got to rely on logistics robots to fill in the gaps, so we've got a bunch of requester chests all over the place. And... This original design, this is based on a design for a vanilla base. It's designed to be almost entirely belt based so we can focus on construction robots and they can start building the base. But because we need the requester chests, we need logistics robots first and it's just jamming everything up. Our requester chest creator right here is at the end of the row because it's not needed in the vanilla version. I just adapted this thing. This endgame mall is by far the most complicated thing in the entire base, and it takes as long to design this thing as it does to design the rest of the entire base put together. It's really, really hard, so I just decided to adapt it. And as a result, it's slowing us down a bit. Do we have some in here now? We do. Okay, let's go start. Oh, I guess I already had some, huh? Didn't I? Let's start putting these around. We need one here so that we can receive some single cylinder engines. The construction robots aren't going to be doing anything because there's no actual transport belts being crafted. 
Okay, so there's that. Then we need to make sure the single cylinder engine is being crafted once that's filled in. And I guess that's being made over here. I might need to handcraft some red belts just to get this whole thing operational. So that's going to be right there. I don't have any of those guys either. I'll have to go pick up some passive provider chests. And I'm not sure if we can wait for this to happen. I might have to go clear out some aliens with my current technology, which is pretty limited. I've only got a combat shotgun. I've got a rocket launcher, a flamethrower. I've got grenades, poison capsules, and gun turrets with firearm magazine, the default magazine, which is not very good for this point in the game. Let me just put down some turrets real quick, give them some ammo. This is my like backup defense here. And then I'll give them a little bit of a wall. Slow down the aliens a little bit. I guess that'll do. So at the base, at the moment, we've got, what do we got? We have about 200 logistics robots and about 66 construction robots, or exactly that number. Actually, not about exactly that number. And they are actually doing stuff. Things are happening. Okay, good. So now we just need to not die here. That would be fantabulous. All right, here we go. Here we go. Please don't kill me. No, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Ah, die, sucker. <laughs> All right, uh, let's heal up a little bit. I did manage to research power armor, but there's nothing in it, and we don't have power armor mark two, so we're a little bit... I just feel underpowered at the moment. Maybe I can get in here and do some of that. Flamethrower is pretty effective against these high armor guys. Yep. Uh-huh. I just want to get in far enough to be able to do that. Ah! Oh, I'm in the goop! I'm in the goop! Oh, no! Ha! Woo! Oh, wow, that was close. That was close! Okay, then we run in with the long-range ballistic strike. Boom! Like that! You wreck, sucker! And we heal up with the med pack. All right. Oh, that's... Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, no! <laughs> Blowing my own face up! Where's my power armor? Need my power armor. Okay. Heal up a little bit. Ballistic strike. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, the nests are gone. Now we just have to take care of that worm. There we go. Oh, let me heal up a little bit. Man, I'm going to have to grab some more fish. So I can have some more... So I can have some more med packs. Man, these guys do so much damage. Oh, he's not dead. It might help to kill him. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I took out a tiny little nest there. That was hard fought. Our pollution has outpaced my expansion. My base has almost no defenses. I have a few turrets out. They're just using ammo. I don't have any laser turrets. I don't have any flamethrower turrets. I don't have any artillery. So we are highly underpowered. We have to get a little bit ahead of the curve so I can finish teching up to my power armor mark two. This is sub-step 37 of step three of the hostile alien planet crash landing recovery kit. Yeah, this can be really simple. We're just gonna take care of it. Here we go. So I managed to kill enough aliens to give myself enough space to research Power Armor Mark II. And in it, I've placed a whole bunch of solar panels, some batteries, a few exoskeleton legs, a few roboports, some adaptive armor, and a jetpack. Ooh, a jetpack. Let's give that a try. Press J to jetpack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Check that out. Just leaving fire in the air to step over everything. Look at that. We got some productivity modules, by the way. We got some beacons. Everything's operational. We're making all the stuff. I think it's probably time that we grab some ammo, we restock, and we go show these aliens just who they're dealing with. Okay, here we go. Wow, that nest is quite a bit larger. I think the evolution is starting to kick in. There are some, let's see if I can focus on some of these guys. There's some big spitters, big biters. There's a whole lot of nests, whole lot of worms. I wonder if I can just strafe them. I do move pretty quick in jetpack mode. Can I just dive bomb them with some poison capsules then fly back over with grenades? Let's give that a try. Let's see if I uh, die or don't die. I'm not sure if the worms are going to slow me down when I'm jetpacking like this. Oh my god! Fly! 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 Oh, they're knocking me out of the air! Okay. Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. They knocked me right out of the air. 
They knocked me right out of the air. Thankfully, my adaptive armor saved me. We don't have to rely so much on med packs anymore now that the armor is starting to regen. I did... Oh, I took out a lot just from that. All right, maybe we should try... Uh, let's try the grenades with a little straight... As long as they don't get hit, what's, what's the worst that could happen, right? Oh, I got hit. Yeah, we're going to get hit. Okay, maybe I can't really um, rely on that too much. Take that. Burn. Die. And grenades. Stuff like that. Yep. Uh-huh. Blood. Death. Fire. Brimstone. Okay, here we go. Strafe attack number the three. More poison caps. Can I lose them in the forest? Oh, no. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like, constantly getting de-jetpacked. All right. Yeah, we definitely cannot rely on the jetpack in combat. We can get to the uh, to the front with the jetpack and away from the front front with the jetpack. I guess I don't need to rely on the car as much anymore, but we can't really use it for combat. I'm quite a bit quicker. I should probably just rely on my exoskeleton legs to get in there and poison cap. Take out some of the bases, and then we'll finish her up. Use the fire for the wormies. All right, let's try a few more. Yeah, okay, that worked. That was good. Perfect. Perfection. Yeah, just follow me. I'm walking backwards with a trail of fire. Just walk right into that, idiot. No wonder you're getting supplanted. You're not the rightful. You're not the rightful rulers of this area. Ah! Uh-oh. 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 Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I have fire. They don't. What are they gonna do? Spit, spit acid at me? That's not gonna work. Obviously, that's not gonna work. Serpentine, serpentine, walk without rhythm, walk without rhythm, then the worms can't track you. Yes. Yeah, you see, they spat where I was not. That's because they're stupid, and I'm smart. Okay, here we go. Long range attack, try to take out some of the base. Good, okay. It's just a war of attrition, I guess, at this point. I've got... My power armor mark too, and I've got some technology in it, but we can't really tech up a lot of damage and a lot of the other things because uh, all that stuff's tied behind going into outer space. We're just going to have to make do with what we've got until I can actually... Oh! Until we can actually get to outer space maybe next episode or so. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that was a good one. That was a good little run. Good little run. Okay, we're almost there. I am just... Walking through a giant field littered with the dead locals. They just can't get it into their thick skulls that their time is done. Their time is done. The time of Zisto is here. The time of aliens is gone. It's over. It's past. That is a lot of pollution. Where's all that pollution coming from? It's a mystery. Nobody knows. There you go. There you go. A little a little uh, bath bomb there for you. Yeah, soak it in. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good on your skin. And I'm out of med packs. Robots, fetch me some fish. Ooh, I think the tide is turning. I think we've almost wiped them out. As far as I can tell, there's just this little pack here. There might be some expansions I've missed. I'm going to have to double check after this. I Oh, yeah, I think that's the last nest. Now we just have worms to take care of. All right, let me, let's me let get out of range, and we'll just bomb them with my rocket launcher. There's that guy gone. So I've been doing some jetpacking, and I got something really cool to show you. I was planning on finding the best bottleneck and setting up a wall with some laser turrets and some flamethrower turrets and all that kind of stuff, but as I was flying around, I found something pretty unique. This, uh, this landmass, it's not a peninsula. It's an island. It's a gigantic island. I have never, in all my thousands of hours playing Factorio, I have never seen an island this big. Ordinarily, if you get an island, they're kind of smaller. And any kind of larger landmass just connects to all the other landmasses. But somehow, I think I really lucked out. We hit the jackpot of map terrain. So now we've got this island all to ourselves. And that is crazy. I have never seen that ever before. So with that discovery, I think that about wraps up this episode. The robots have just about finished 
building the base, although we still have a lot to do. We've got a lot of technology to research, and we've got to upgrade the base. All of the yellow belts need to be upgraded to red belts. All of the furnaces need to be upgraded to steel furnaces, and we have to actually fill in all the belts. We are not supplying as much ore as the thing is going to need, and we're not using any of our trains yet, all that kind of stuff. There's still quite a lot to do. And we will get into that next episode, and we'll also start getting into the meat and potatoes of the Space Exploration Mod Pack. The reason I've been rushing so much in these first two episodes is because I want to get to this. I want to launch a rocket into space to discover new planets, and I want to get the cargo rocket silo, which allows us to launch cargo, I think including ourselves, into space or to other planets. So we can start building stuff into space, getting resources from outer space, and doing all the cool stuff that this mod pack has to offer. And if you think I rushed a little bit too much, I did two live streams where I did all the boring stuff of building this base. So if you didn't catch that, or if you weren't aware of my VOD channel, they've been uploaded to my VOD channel on YouTube. I'll put a link to those in the description if you're curious. And with that said, I think it's time to say goodbye. I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.